So now we're going to look at the mean and standard deviation for a binomial distribution. I mean, we've already done it for a discrete random variable and gotten these two formulas here, which we did in the beginning of chapter five. But the thing with those is you need the whole distribution. You need an entire table, so you need to solve it for every x, which we could do for the binomial, but it's not necessary. You just need three numbers, n, the number of trials, p, the probability of success, and q, the probability of failure. And you can get the mean, having the same meaning, and the standard deviation without having an entire table. To find the mean for a binomial distribution, you're just gonna multiply n and p. And this means you don't need some big whole table or elaborate multiplication process. And to find the standard deviation, remembering that we use the symbol sigma, we're gonna have sigma equals the square root of n times p times q. So we're just multiplying the three parts and then taking their square root. So now let's go ahead and take a look at an example. There is a 10 question multiple choice with four options each. Find the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so the important thing here is we're not asked for a probability, we're asked to find the mean and standard deviation. So like always, I like to find my parts. N is 10 questions. The probability of success is 1 fourth because there's four options. I mean, it happens to be A through D, but there's four options. And so the probability of failure is 3 fourths because the other three out of four options would be incorrect. So to find the mean, I multiply N times P. The number of things we're looking at times the probability of one success would give me 2.5. And that's my answer. Now we're looking at questions on a test and I know that you can't get 2.5 right. We're assuming there's no such thing as multiple choice partial credit, at least in this case. But remember, that's how averages work. I mean, there's the phrase that the average household has um, 2.5 kids, right? So this is just saying that one person who took the test and guessed got two questions right. Someone else who took the test and guessed got three questions right. And so when you average them out between the two of them, they average two and a half questions correct. And also notice we didn't change the answer to a percentage because again, it's not a probability question. To find the standard deviation, the formula said to multiply n, p, and q under a square root so that I end up with the square root of 1.875. You probably wouldn't even write that number down. You'd probably just enter the whole thing at once in your calculator to get 1.369, et cetera, for 1.37 as a standard deviation. Remember, that's the spread, that if you don't get two and a half questions right on average, you're probably above or below by 1.37 questions. And again, this is where we don't get whole number answers, but it's important to leave all the decimal points to help really understand what the value means. Okay, so let's look at question four. And again, you might wanna work ahead and see if you get the right answer. But a report states that 80% of adult smokers started smoking before turning 18 years old. Find the mean and standard deviation for the number of smokers who started before turning 18 years old. But importantly, it's in a group of 200 because we're gonna need that N. So I would need to find my parts, the 200 smokers, the probability of starting before you're 18 is 80%, but I have to change percentages into decimals to use them in a formula. And so the probability of failure is 20%, which is 0.2. So for the mean, I multiply N and P, and 80% of 200 people is 160 people. This one just worked out to be a whole number, that's fine. It would still be something we're gonna answer with. So 160 people in that room probably, or on average would say, if we had a bunch of rooms of 200 people, on average would say, I started smoking before I turned 18. So for the standard deviation, when we take N times P times Q, realize we've already multiplied n times p up above. So we already knew the value was 160. So if you wanted to, you could almost shortcut or start the formula that way, 160 times q, but be sure to take the square root 
and work it out. And so in this case, we get 5.656, so with rounding, 5.66. So that if 160 people didn't say they started smoking before they were 18, on average, you know, what, go back to the empirical rule, you know, whatever percent of the population, you know, would say it was within five and a half years of that.